All right, guys, today um, I'm working on a bifold wallet. Uh, I did one uh, yesterday, <clears throat> uh, new design. Uh, I got the card slots just a sh hair, hair too small. That's why we do test runs, I suppose. And today uh, I got a new one all cut out, and I'm just going to kind of go over my dyeing process with you. I'm sure everybody has their own you know ways this that works for them this is what I found works for me uh, we're doing black again this is actually be for a guy I work with um, I've found using a rag uh, works the best for me um, I tried daubers and all that stuff it just to me it just comes out too streaky I think um, so I just kind of rub it in nice and good. Make sure you uh, do all your tooling first. Um, this one, there's much, not much tooling on this one. I just beveled the edges on this one. Um, but if you're going to put, <clears throat> you know, a basket weave or whatever, um, it's recommended that you uh, do all that first. Um, that way, <clears throat> when you, if you punch too hard in the leather, you don't... Um, break into it and uh, some of the veg tan come through I and mean, that's if you really hit it hard I guess um, I haven't done too much tooling I've done a little bit but right now I'm just kind of focusing on my techniques and stuff and after I'm done dying I do light coat a leather balm with atom wax. This first coat I usually do really light, so I'm going to come back when I finish anyway. And also, the advantage of doing this uh, <clears throat> when the leather is not completely dry with the dye is the pores are still open. You know, it's just like a skin on any animal, you know, even with ourselves, you know, we all have pores. I don't get that. <clears throat> that top coat in there. I've also noticed, especially with like the browns and stuff, uh, this will uh, darken it a little bit. Not not too terribly bad though. So, get a nice coat in there. let it dry mm -hmm. all right one uh one step I, I i forgot that i do before i glue uh depending on what project is um like with this one these are going to be sewn on to here and i usually uh, lately i've been doing edge paint but i do burnishing as well um but uh, i always do the top and the sides that i'm gonna that I won't be able to get to. Um, the bottom and the other side, uh, I need to all sand down and, and edge paint. Uh, once I get the wall, I'll put together. But I use these uh, these uh, sanding sponges. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight. Um, tell you the truth, I can't tell you how much. They're uh, actually left over um, from my dad. And I haven't really needed to get them because he had like 10 packages. So, with those two done, uh, <clears throat> these are like, this is like 150. Um, uh, it starts out like 120, but after you start using them, it gets to like uh, 150, 200 grit. I usually just kind of go around and get, get the edges just a little bit, and then I'll come back around with uh, 320. 
Um, I haven't really found I need to go any any finer than 320. You know, even with the uh, 320, after you use it a while, you know, it's going to get up to up in the four and 600 grit after some of that grit starts, you know, coming off. But yeah, I'll get these all sanded down and um, I'll edge paint. I'll kind of show you a trick that I use for that. Um, I've seen a lot of guys who use one of those those uh, edge rollers. I did order one, but I didn't look where it was coming from, so it's coming from China, so it's not going to be in for another four to six weeks. But I'll show you really quick on this one since I got that one ready to go. Just uh, edge note, I got this at uh, Tandy Leather. Um, you can find all kinds of stuff online, like I got red and green. Uh, that turns out, that's what I did on this one. Turns out pretty nice. Uh, the edge note does soak in a lot better, because this is more like a fabric paint. But I ended up having to do two or three coats, and it takes longer to dry, and I can be kind of impatient. Not all the time, but sometimes. But I just take my awl and stick it in there and just brush it across the edge. Some people use sponges. And like I said, a lot, I've seen a lot of people use those red rollers. Um, Alright, so I got the first one glued on there. Um, it's basically, I just take it and kind of line it up on this side. And I have it marked on the leather as well. And then before I really set it in, I, before I made measurements to make sure everything's square and all that good stuff. Press it on there and kind of do a light tamp. And then <clears throat> gonna go ahead and prick this. Sew them up. Typically, like I'm going around the outside, I'm gonna mark it so I get the line straight, but I'm only doing one. One of these. So. back side so that's where all my overhang is going to be my overhang thread um, let's do a basic saddle stitch um, I kind of do my saddle stitch a little different than everybody else uh, it turns out the same but it goes a lot faster for me it's kind of hard to show on a small one small stitch but um, instead of going one in and one out I'll just go all the way around the entire project and then come back around um, it goes a little faster for me personally and turns out exactly the same I'm going to have to say this is the, takes the longest is doing all the stitching um, hopefully someday I'll have a sewing machine, among other things that I would like to have. And on that back, on the back outside parts, I, I back stitch because you're going to want this. Um, doesn't have to be a pretty stitch, but you're definitely going to want this stitch to be strong because you're going to be shoving cards and stuff down in there. All right. Um, Got all the bottom pieces um, glued on um, everywhere. Everything's good to go. Got one of these compasses. I got it set for an eighth of an inch. Just follow along the outside. And it, then you got a mark to where you can punch and you got a straight line. I usually start at the top. 
with these. <clears throat> and then when I usually when I do corners, I'll I'll, I'll do the corners because I ran into problems to where the they wouldn't line up in the corners. And then the corners got they just didn't look right. basically just punch it out thread it um, thanks again for watching if uh, I don't have any subscribers of yet but I really haven't been promoting it too much uh, just want to try and get some content on here uh, hopefully you guys enjoy uh, enjoy what I want to making and um, by tomorrow I should have my Etsy account set up so if you guys ever uh, want to check them out it's gonna be Poppleton Avenue uh, leather leather and crafts um, that's what my SD store. It's the same name as my YouTube page. Uh, so hopefully uh, I'll hear from some of you guys too. Uh, let me know if I'm doing something wrong or if you guys enjoy uh, enjoy watching. Okay, uh, I got got it all put together. Um, final uh, coat of atom wax. Uh, I put it after I'm done edge painting too. When I when I do the final top coat, I put it on the on the edge paint too. It seems to to shine it up really nice. I mean, it's kind of shiny right now, but you can see it's kind of dull. But take a cloth, really start getting that wax. I think it's bees wax that they uh, that's incorporated in with this balm. It's either bees or paraffin. I'm not sure which one. See how, see how shiny it starts getting. <clears throat> 